Hello guys, how are you? The Kotolik is here. I continue series on E2 framework and in this video we're going to talk about application components. We're going to see the core components um, and how to extend these core components and we're going to also see how to create and bootstrap our components. Okay, so let's start. If we have a look at the following config file, we can see uh, com uh, components a key here and then request cache user and so on. So all of these are uh, core components. Okay, and sometimes we don't see class property here, like for request, because uh, it's configured in the application, in the core, which class to be used when the component ID is request. Okay, and the key here in the components associative array, the key here is the component ID and the value is configuration object. Okay, so for cache, we have the class property which is e caching file cache. So e supports other cache uh, caching systems like Redish or DB cache and, or, or etc. But uh, this is not just the scope of this video. I want to focus on the components and I plan a separate video on each of the components like caching, request uh, and so on. Okay. And let's, uh, let's see now the place where all these components are registered automatically uh, by, their, by their class. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so in the uh, eWeb application, if I follow this class, if I open this class, you can also find this class in your vendor folder. Um, so go to the vendor folder, then eSoft, E2, and below in the web folder, there will be this application. Okay, so uh, here the application uh, below, I think, there is core components method. And here is the uh, component ID and the corresponding configuration object. Okay, so the, for request, the configuration object is this one. For response, is this one, and so on. And it uses parent core components, which is um, eBase application. And we have here log, view, formatter, uh, internalization, and so on. Again, each of the components um, deserve its own video. It's a big part, like internalization or formatting. And I'm definitely going to do this, but uh, not, not in this video, okay? So core components, and then we have here uh, eWeb components. And all these components uh, are automatically available without specifying the class name. And the components are also are used, some of the components are used in the uh, core. So if I comment all these components right now in the config file, uh, I will see an error. So first error is user identity class must be set. So this means that the user component is absolutely mandatory component with its identity class. And the second error will be a request cookie validation key must be configured. And we need to uncomment this uh, cookie validation key of the request component basically. Okay. So the other things are not mandatory, but they are good to have like error handler. If you need mailer, of course, you need to configure it and so on. Okay, now let's see, um, by the way, let me show the link where you can find all the core components in the documentation. So this is uh, in the application structure, application components. Okay, so here are a uh, little bit of information how to create components, which I'm gonna also show you. Uh, and below we have here core components. Um, and this is the full list of core components and I definitely recommend to check out this link and know more about the components in general or you can follow these uh, hyperlinks and uh, just see the class of the, uh, for example, the uh, uh, application. Where is this application? So like response component, uh, internalization and so on. Okay, so each, each component has its own section. Okay, so now let me show you uh, one specific component, like like URL manager. Uh, so this is by default uh, commented in, in the code and we can uncomment this. Uh, let me show uh, let me show this without uh, URL manager. Okay, so uh, we see the URLs, I can navigate and I see the URLs. Um, I explained this in one of the previous videos, but I will quickly show you. Okay, so this is how URLs look like without URL manager's particular properties. Now I uncomment the URL manager and we see here two properties, enable pretty URL and show script name. 
okay so if i uh set these properties like this then i can navigate between pages and my urls are prettier and i don't see index php anymore also okay so this is how i configured a uh, url manager component so if i follow this uh, url manager class it will be in the core components here it is in core components i see url manager and it uses this class e web url manager okay sometimes it's not clear when you're looking at the uh, component in your config file it's not clear which class is used for this component so for this you need to check out the documentation or you need to know uh, that this is the e web url manager you basically can find this in ebay's application okay so i'm going to follow this class by a control and a mouse and here are the properties of the application of the uh, component excuse me so enable pretty url which is by default false enable strict parsing false and a couple of other properties each properties have a lot of documentation so explained well um rules show script name and we use these two properties show script name and enable pretty url okay so we can use other properties in the config uh, in the configuration of the component and see how it works but um, uh, i'm not going to do this because in this case the video will be too long okay now let me show you um one additional component and um show you how to extend this component okay so like asset manager for example and the asset manager let's let's check the asset manager where it is here it is and the asset manager supports a couple of properties and the one property i want to focus on is is append timestamp okay so let me copy this um go to the config file and put here without dollar sign append timestamp is true okay let's go to the uh, website and view page source view page source and now i see that the timestamp is added uh, to all css and even javascript files here it is so without this append timestamp uh, this basically uh, is without the timestamp okay so now i'm going to extend the asset manager so i will go to the uh, root folder create uh, components folder and create an asset manager class uh, it's a VH file I want to create class asset manager and the namespace will be app backslash components and I want to extend this from the core asset manager which will be e web asset manager okay so I am extending this and if I go to the um, asset manager uh, component in the configuration, I can now change the class. OK, so class must be app components components, excuse me, asset manager. OK, so this is the class um, I can set the app and timestamp true uh, or I can I have a typo here. Um, or I can do the following. I will go to the asset manager and override this um, append timestamp property and set it to true. Okay. In this case, I don't need to put this append timestamp in the um, in the configuration in the config uh, array. Okay. So I'm using right now the asset when the asset manager is created, this class will be used, and by default, this class has append timestamp true. So if I check the source right now, I see the timestamp, and let's go to the site controller uh, on the index page and let's uh, let's dump okay i'm going to var dump e up asset manager okay and let's go to the home page and here is my asset manager i need to remove this okay so here's my asset manager and as, as you can see the class is app components asset manager okay so without uh, without this class the asset manager is cores asset manager here is here is eweb asset manager okay okay let's see uh, how to create new uh, new component okay um, before I show this to you, let me collapse this. Uh, I want to talk about the bootstrap application property, which is uh, connected to the component. 
OK, so by default, all components are lazy loaded. So if there is not um, access made to the component, it's, it's not used. So uh, we make access to the components by writing uh, E up and the component ID. OK, component ID and the component ID, uh, the core components ID are request or session or security or user etc okay so if we create new component we specify id and we can use this id here new component id okay i hope this makes sense now i'm going to show you um uh, yeah the, the bootstrap property okay so uh, by default all components are uh, lazy loaded okay if you don't mean make an access on the component it's it's not uh, the instance is not created Okay, and this uh, law of this bootstrap uh, property gives us possibility to in create an instance even though I don't make a, uh, access on this application property. So it's uh, created anyway. And the next time when you try to access it, it returns the same instance. So the application components are singletons, right? Okay, so now I'm going to create a new application uh, component and let's create this in the components folder and call it um, test component okay test component the only thing i need to do is to extend the component okay e base component and let's go to the eweb and create new component here and call it test okay so for test component i'm this is the component id for, uh, for test component uh, i want to use class app components test component okay and now i can make an access to this component uh, by e up test okay and i can i can dump this and if i check this now in browser i see here app components test component okay so the um this is the instance let me go to the test component and override a constructor OK, so I override the constructor and I want to dump something here. OK, so just one. So let's refresh the page and here it is, this one. So when I make an access to the component, if I don't make an access to the component, uh, this one is not printed. So the construct is not called and the instance is not created. OK, as soon as I make an access to the component, and I don't need to dump the component itself right now. So I just make an access to the component. This means I want to use it. So here is this one. And even if I don't make an access and I want the instance to be created, I need to add the I need to add the test component ID in the bootstrap. Okay, and refresh the page and I see this one here. So now I can I can add additional methods here like um, hello method i can add additional properties public there one which is 10 for example and i can use these properties or methods in the um, when i'm making access to the component okay so e test let's write um, hello so and let's print something from the hello okay so i, I will dump again so hello from test Okay, let's refresh the page and here is the hello from test, which is called on the test component. So um, there basically exists three ways to define your components. Okay, so one way is uh, when the component ID corresponds to an associative array. Second way is that you just correspond to the class name. If you don't have any additional uh, properties, any configuration properties on the component and you don't want to pass them, you can just do like this. So test component corresponds to some class and this works in the same way. And the third way is to create a closure and return an instance uh, from this function. Okay, so I return an instance of um, app components application component. Okay, and this works in the same way. So we can see, refresh the page, and here it is. That's the end of this video, uh, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and see you guys in the next time.